Hello everybody and welcome back to Warptorio. In between episodes, I did spend a bit of time consolidating the defenses and as you can see, I removed two rows of dragon teeth. We now have a four lane laser turret defense backed up by flame turrets. And I think that this should make our survivability substantially better. Nevertheless, I will uh, go ahead and I'll just queue up a couple of research levels for um, for flame threads. I also want to make sure that we stop. Uh, launching more rockets that's a that's a pretty big resource drain and not one that i want to uh, to sustain right now now there is still going to be a problem in this corner where i've seen that that turret keeps getting destroyed i just want to make sure that there's no additional I did mark some things, some cliffs for deconstruction, and I didn't have the um, the cliffs explosives to uh, back that up. And as it turns out, I did miss one corner. So let's quickly go ahead and finish setting up that um, that final piece of defense this should give me a bit of a breathing room and as you just saw over over here just a bit earlier there was power drain almost up to here 90 80 percent 90 percent i didn't catch the exact number but there was power drain uh well, 90 percent enough to make me uncomfortable let's uh, let's put it Let's put it like that. Okay, the uh, defense is full now. And that is because our steel smelting over here. That's interesting. Um, our steel smelting facility is fully operational. Now, before we go into solving that issue, which is probably going to be the main focus for today's episode. I do want to get back to my home base and um, let's see, I will just copy this thing over. And over here, set up a requester chest. I want to get repair packs. Really, I cannot do that? that was, oh, yeah, because it would try to actually repair the chest. Request from buffer chest. So this should make repair packs available in all in all areas uh, which should be a huge benefit uh, now if i automate both repair packs drone well not both three of them repair packs drones and robots and maybe walls that would make our defense fully sustainable um, but we should see way less access over here, which is going to make me extremely happy. And before I get to solving the power issue, I need to keep an eye out on this, but uh, this is still, this was not operational and my power was still drained. Um, that is a bit concerning, but nevertheless, 
before I get into that, I actually want to solve another issue. And oh, I can most definitely clear this toolbar out and I'll make this a circuit dedicated toolbar. So I want to stop using, at least for in between, in between factory floors, I want to stop using um, the warp loaders because of the above mentioned issues. Okay, 34 is a way better number. Cannot reach? Okay, I can reach. And this is fully modded. This is really awesome. Um, still missing blue chips, but um, well, this should basically be the best, the most efficient way of making. Um, do I want another level of this? I will queue up just one more level. It's still fairly decent in price, but yeah, this should be the best way of taking care of uh, building the um, warp modules. Anyway, let's have a quick look at not utilizing these things to move items between floors. Um, while um, doing the defenses, I did pick up a couple of uh, warp chests around the uh, path, and we actually got a warp nuke and an atomic bomb. We might uh, we might test one of these uh, out fairly soon. So let's see. What I want to do is basically make sure that I have a twenty warp. What's it called? Orctorium fuel cells on this floor, but not only on that floor, but also over on this floor. And in order to do that, uh, okay, first of all, I will hopefully not have to deal with this sound anytime soon, but I do want to be notified if something goes terribly wrong. So, as I was saying, I will use this chest and this chest. This is a requester. This is, this is a provider. This is going to be a uh, okay, no, this is the lower floor. This is going to be a provider. This is going to be a requester. So I will set this floor up first. And the way I'm going to do that is, first of all, set this. This is going to be basically the number of things that I wish to demand. And I will, I could just keep things in this chest, but I want to, just in case I have too many items, I want to avoid clogging this chest up, or just in case um, there's gonna be a buffer run out. So I will set up a, a buffer chest over here. Now, unfortunately for the buffer chest, I do need to also set up the required ingredients because first of all, I might not be able to Okay, that delivered a ton of things. Is the Warptorium fuel over here? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. Um, let's, let's dial this down a notch. Um, 
uh, how many robo ports this required um quite a few let's put 20 and i'll leave the others in buffer so i'll keep i'll keep this on me for now until i finish setting up the um, the circuit condition so i could leave things in here but i do want to I, I want to make sure that this just doesn't get blocked so i am and i cannot just link the combinator to this chest because if i was to link them i wouldn't be able to uh, this chest works in either read contents or set filters mode. I cannot have both at the same time for some reason. I'm assuming that there's a very good reason for that. But um, I do want to read the contents of this one. And speaking of... This is how this is going to work. So... We will have the contents of both this chest and this chest as inputs over here. So this needs to work in read contents mode. And I will uh, time this by minus one. We will output... Where's the... I've used the wrong signal and I want to output this. So everything that is going to be in these two chests is going to be timed by minus one. So if I was to have a couple of fuel cells here, I would have a minus two. And I will combine these two outputs and I'll put them over here for visibility. And this gives me 18, the signal, the final signal that's going to be over here. This is the number of items that I have missing between both of these chests. And I say between both of that those chests because, um, well, you'll see in just a second. So if I put the wire here and that was a weird interaction, but uh, let's go with it. So um, just making sure settings sound yep everything's okay everything works as expected um i want to have the substation in here as well i'll keep two of them for the sake of symmetry and this will give me this signal over here. And the only thing I need to do is go over here and set a request. And this is awesome. Now, this is going to act just as a pass through. So this signal will actually be sent over to the boiler floor let's um clear those chests i don't know why like i know i had some of them there but i don't know why i had all of them anyway i will keep this one as As a requester so this now I have no idea how uh, why I had the um, uh, this fuel on the belt do I still have it um, anyway that being said if I put a I should have the chests here as well, at least the basic ones. So if I put a provider chest over here, a passive provider chest over here, and let's first of all dump all of this. We 
we should see that we have exactly 20 fuel cells over here now sometimes it will be a bit less sometimes it will be a bit more there is uh, going to be some buffer between these chests uh, some buffer lag between these chests while the robots are moving from here to here there will theoretically be no uh, no items in the circuit network and that will make uh, that send a signal to request more but as you can see the signal now is nullified the amount in this chest compensates for the amount requested over here and i will go ahead and head back to the top floor or head to the top floor not back because i want the exact same items on the top floor as well can i move this over here yes i can so this is gonna be um let me see now you're gonna be doing bad stuff and i don't like it i am still losing robots which is really annoying i i'm probably gonna set up robots walls and turrets so that i have a fully sustainable defense but um i do want to finish this bit so i do have 20 and 20 i will keep them on me for now just to make sure that everything is working and the principle is going to be the same i have connected this one i need to connect this one as well to inputs so if i put this and check really quick i'll see that well this should be to uh, this should go to zero. Oh, i guess uh some of the fuel cells actually got moved to, to some of the chests so this is perfect we are actually missing four items here uh, let's connect this to okay so i want to connect this one to this one perfect and i will connect this to this so now we should see the missing four items now what i do not want it's so tricky with a spider tron to just stay on one floor what I do not want is to connect this straight to here because that's going to set a maximum of 20 between both of these floors and basically the stock at the top will attenuate the request for this one and vice versa. And that is not something that uh, I wish to, uh, to have. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to put a one way pass through for the signal and the easiest way i think i can do that is just using this arithmetic combinator i will just copy over the signal but i do not i just want to multiply by one so obviously multiplying everything by one is basically doing nothing but what that does is this is a now a separate circuit network from this one this the signal is passed over here so this will say that, hey, downstream, I am missing some things. Also, this needs to be connected over here. So this should now request the four missing fuel cells. And now this should be, oh, as I was saying, we have, we're on negative one because there's a, there's a, is some buffer delay between moving things from the chest to the from the red chest to the, uh, to the buffer chest i could move this right below to reduce the flight time but that's that's still got even if it's missing for one tick it's still gonna send the request through but we now have warp fuel delivered to this floor as well and let me make sure that these are actually connected they are connected so this is one way the great advantage for this is that I can add any item 
and this will be delivered uh, so this is to deliver items upward if i want to deliver items downward uh, i do need to set up to reserve another chest so i'll probably use these two chests if i want to deliver things in small quantities downward and i can add any item here that i wish i need to set a buffer chest for it as well uh, connected to the same uh, logical operator and that will basically be everything um, quite a neat setup um, it took me a bit of filtering around to actually get it to work as i wanted to but yeah I'm, I'm quite happy with this i'm gonna leave this as is for now and i want to go ahead and do a new build and for that new build i will i think choose i need to choose a lake i want a lake that is let's say vertical i think that this would actually be a good candidate this would be a good candidate as well this has a little bit less land on it which is very good um i'm thinking do i want to fill any of these lakes in the future probably not okay uh i will use the smaller one for now doesn't really matter which one i use in the end i won't be using that much power i want to make sure on the other hand that this is set to 4k and um, I'm having a bit of trouble with my with my sound so I will just try to Okay, I think that this is better. I wasn't hearing the alerts, so I do want to see when things get damaged. And that's just in time. Yeah, maybe I'm, I'm gonna... Slowly back off here. How many bots do I... St oh, wow. I'm down to just 62 bots. Um... I do need to head over there, unfortunately, and um, take care of that issue. I really wish I could more easily cycle between... Um, alerts. Because it tells me I have three alerts, but it only took me to one of them. And just clicking on this um, multiple times doesn't actually show me all the areas of where there's issues. But I know for a fact that I'm losing bots left and right here. Because, well, there's, uh, uh, there's quite a bit of damage. So what I'm going to do here here is actually reduce the number of laser turrets might sound a bit counterintuitive uh, I'll add a few more uh, no nope, I need to disable my bots so I want to move this um, let's see maybe over here like this So this will let them come just a bit closer. I do want that one there. Uh, this wall is thicker now on purpose. Uh, 
um will this have an impact this has some impact over here so i'm hoping that by tapering off this corner just slightly it will actually improve the number of bots that i'm um, i'm losing over here And since I'm here, I am going to spend just a bit of extra time um, Let's see This needs to filter on laser turrets and this needs to filter on construction bots Pair packs are working as intended. So let's filter this down to maybe 200. Can I remove the chest limit? Uh, like that. Uh, this I will. I will filter this on 50 and if you are hearing me poorly I am really sorry about that I'm I've been having a cold for a few weeks now nothing too serious but it's just um, like voice voice issues I cannot speak that loud um, so yeah sorry about that I'm trying to keep my voice to a decent level but um, yeah um, sometimes I uh, my voice just goes um, just goes way too low uh, so I want to filter this on T, which is the number of total construction robots. So when we're below, let's say 200, I need this guy to insert a few more bots and we are below 200. And I will copy this over everywhere. Now, I really hope that they don't reach this far to, de to dis destroy my outpost, my um, supply post. but. chest here I'll pick things up I will destroy the ones that I do not care about so speaking of I think it's about time to do a bit of that cleanup actually I'll keep that on me I do not want that Everything else can stay. Cool. I can do this. So... Let's set this to request construction bots to 200, request from buffer chests, and buffer chests, I want you to request laser turrets, 100. Cool, so that is, that makes that side fully automated, hopefully, and no more, no more nasty issues. This should let me get back to to the build that I want to, to look at. Okay, that's that's what I want to see destroyed. Like I will get things destroyed, that's for sure. But those things need to be walls, not robots, not turrets, not anything else. So I did say that I'm gonna choose the other lake. Now I 
might go against it once the blueprint is placed down and go back to the bigger lake but let's see i first want to have a nice empty space somewhere i think i'm actually gonna go up to this iron to this stone patch so what i want to create next is a tileable nuclear blueprint and well because of the water limitation on the factory floor and the fact that I will definitely be using more than Do I want to remove these turrets as well? Let's try it with these turrets removed. Already lost uh, two bots here. Anyway, um, I have decided that the power production is going to be off platform. And well, this gives me the opportunity to test out uh, a blueprint that I think I've used a couple of times before uh, a while back in vanilla but I haven't built in a long time and I did want to build this as most of the things from scratch so what I'm gonna be looking at building is a tileable nuclear reactor setup what's a tileable nuclear reactor setup well it's basically a place where I can just put this, 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 and so on. Um, ideally, just by dropping in the blueprint. Now, the challenge with this is the vertical space. And I won't be building in any sort of, or very limited steam buffers. And I will also, um, scale this for these types of reactor setups and that basically gives me a bit more power to work with but um at the very beginning it's gonna be oversized so normally a 4x4 a 2x2 nuclear reactor setup will produce 480 megawatts because it's 40 the neighboring bonus is gonna be 2 and that means um, 120 120 times 4 that is 480 with this the ones in the middle the neighboring bonus is actually going to be three so that's going to give me a total of 160 megawatts per nuclear reactor and that's 160 times four that is 640 megawatts uh 640 and we are going to be divided into two sides uh also uh Apologies if I get the math wrong. I am doing this from the top of my head. I wanted to do this live without uh, preparing the blueprint or building from a blueprint that I already have. Uh, I think it's a bit more fun this way. So I said three. I said uh, 640, so that divided by 2 is 320. I really hope that my steam pipes can support that amount of steam. So, and very important, I need to stay within the confines of this space and this space alone. I will be using, overusing the pumps. I, I don't think it's actually overusing. So, let's see. 
Uh, this is gonna be the inner in feed and this is going to be the bots please do not play stuff yet this is gonna be the steam outfit and these are how many so i have a lane of three and i said i needed 320 well 320 is not divisible by three unfortunately 330 is though uh, that is 11. Uh, this consumes 103 water per second 103 times 11 is well um 1100 33 which is just below a part uh, of what a uh, water an offshore pump can produce so, uh, an offshore pump produces yeah 12 1200 which is well, basically exactly what we're gonna need here which is good it means that we can supply 33 of these things and The build would look like this so that's uh three i need to put this down 10 times so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and just to count this this is This is not good. That's 90 of them. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's... Okay, 133 in total. Not um, 30 per lane. Still a good number of bots there, so... Uh, 33 in total is up to here. That means I can remove that many so this is 33 and i should be able to just um vertically flip this that's a bit too much Yeah, that's the problem. There's flames here and my bots decided to go ahead and suicide themselves. I really wish there would be a way to... Well, either bots not to take flame damage, which is totally stupid from my point of view, or just delay them, add a delay on how fast they actually go and repair specific buildings. Anyway, uh, don't get distracted, Andre. Focus. Um, now these ones need to go all the way up there and these ones over here like this the water pumps are good there is connection everywhere so this should work now Really, they destroyed six more bots, and these are out of bots. Be this should not be out of repair packs. Did I not put a repair pack delivery system over here? I did not put a repair pack delivery system over there, and I need to go do that. But uh, while I'm doing that, I will talk about the build um, forward. So you might be asking yourselves, why a lake? Why am I building on a lake? Uh, the most annoying thing, at least from my point of view, let me make sure I'm going in the correct place first. Yeah. The most annoying thing from my point of view when uh, building a nuclear reactor is getting all that water there because you need to run 
Well, you need to run pipes. In Factorio, running pipes is... I don't think ever a nice experience. They're clunky, they take up way too much space, and... Okay, uh, this is top top and it works. These are turrets and these are repair packs. Everything should be better in the world now. Yeah, running pipes is just a nightmare. Doing pipe turns takes a lot of space. You get pipe adjacency issues uh, because there's no way to have directional pipes unless you use mods. There are some mods that make pipes a bit more friendly but um, I did not want to use those mods over here uh, I think I've already said something about that not so long ago let me turn off bots make sure I don't build this by accident but and this is where a great um, advantage of building on the lake comes through. I will need to landfill the lake to be able to place this down. But if I leave just enough room over here to not have to landfill, well, that means that I can uh, place this on the lake, have lakes on demand right where I need them to have, right where I need to have them. I could, in theory, even landfill over them after I place the water pumps, but I really do not I really dislike having water pumps on solid surfaces still working. Oh. Oh, wow. Um, that's bad. I did not see when that happened. I really wish I would get less distracted by these biters all the time, but... Well, it is 99.5 evolution and we are attracting all the bases in the on the whole map. Um, oh, I see what happened. I see what happened. I need to make a buffer area here. Do I have... All my bots are dead. Uh, that is highly unfortunate. Uh, do I have grenades on me? I should have some grenades on me. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. That and this. Well, this should first of all make sure that um, everything gets rebuilt really fast. And also, I, I wanted to top off my bot, my personal bots. That's great. This area will be rebuilt, but uh, yeah, let's let's make sure that we do not run into this issue anytime soon. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, that was a bit of a an oopsie from me. So first of all, RoboPort connection here got broken. Also, I've destroyed a few ghosts in the process. And I do have this issue somewhere else. Oh, 
just look at this um, this nightmare over here. So many bots lost. I should have used the uh, thought about using grenades from the get go, but um, well, in the grand scheme of things, not a big deal. Bots are replaceable. Everything is back to normal now. Really hope. And um, let's get back to let's get back to our um, nuclear power plant build. So as I was saying, I will leave a space there uh, in the landfill blueprint. So I'll I'll create two blueprints. One is gonna be for landfill. The other one is gonna be for the actual uh, nuclear plant. Or I could create just one. Uh, well, that's annoying, but it is what it is. So, just by leaving a bit of room here, this will make sure this will ensure that I have a um, place for water pumps, and I will leave a bit of a buffer space. I will continue this with, uh, do I have any? Yeah, I do have. So maybe like this, I'm not that worried about actual space. This will create a chain of, so if I tile this, this is going to look like this, which is perfect. This will create a chain of, um, storage tanks steam tanks across the whole area now i could buffer a bit more in here maybe i'll actually add something like uh, something like this i think that this uh, i'll see how tall the blueprint gets but now uh, here comes the um, tricky part this consumes uh, 582. So if I go ahead and divide 320, which is the production on one side by 5.82, I will get 54.9, so 55. I don't like 55, that's not divisible. Um, that's not divisible by three, but at the same time, this doesn't need to be divisible by three because it is going to be the end of the build. So let's go ahead and do um, and actually do 55 of these. And so that's three of them. Uh, there is going to be a, another challenge over here that I haven't taken into account just yet. And that is going to be power. So I will have to have roboports and I will have to need to have um, power poles connecting everything. So this will need to move slightly higher so that I can have a set of chests here to do um, uh, feeding and extracting of uh, nuclear fuel cells and I will need to connect all the way up here so I might need to I, I might have a bit of a limitation with the steam tanks when it comes to power but uh, yeah that's go all gonna be in the next episode as we have uh, more or less run quite a bit over time on this one but this is gonna be the basic of what we're gonna be doing here uh, create a blueprint. I just want to put this just slightly to scale. I said 55. So it is going to be about yay big. And if I flip this over here, something like this. And I want to see how this all fits. I might, it might be a bit bigger than this, but I want to see how this fits on, on the lake. And it's not, 
important and I might actually uh, choose this lake over the other one because I'm happy to build on land. The important part that needs to be uh, in the lake is actually over here where I have the water pumps. So a narrower lake might even be better, but oh, I need to make sure that um, like actually for what we need. Uh, no, no, no. I do not want this over here because it is going to overlap with my uh, train system. So that's uh, that's that's a bad idea. This lake over here will allow me to build about... Do I have bots in that area? I do not. So I can probably start about here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight, maybe nine. If I get a bit creative with the last one. I might actually use this small lake because there's going to be so much less to landfill than if I was to use a big lake. Uh, but yeah, I will uh, in the next episode finish setting up everything here. Power connections, uh, fuel delivery, most important things, a few pumps here and there. And well, continue with that. Um, Continue with that in the next episode. Uh, that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you here next time.